welcome to the seventh lesson on WSO2 API Manager. In this lesson, you'll learn how to work with published APIs. The API Publisher and API Store web applications allow you to create and manage your APIs. You can access this functionality directly from the application user interfaces, or you can call the Publisher and Store APIs using an external REST client like curl or the WSO2 REST client. The Publisher APIs are REST APIs that perform publishing operations. The APIs are organized into the following categories, APIs API, Tiers API, API Document API, Subscriptions API, Environments API, and Applications API. Let's take a look at a new API Manager instance and see how you can create and delete an API. To create an API, first we need to generate an access token. You can register an OAuth application with the preferred grant type through the payload.json file. Obtain the consumer key secret key pair by calling the dynamic client registration endpoint, which will appear in the response. Using base64encode.org or any other encoder site, encode the client ID and client secret. While generating it, add a colon in between the two values. Next, generate the access token using the already created OAuth application. You will need to replace the encoded client ID and client secret. Amend the scope to apim colon api underscore create in the curl command to run the data.json file. Depending on the requirement, you can change the scope. The invoked token is valid only for an hour and for the given scope. Now, to create an API, we will use the post method to add the phone verification API. The data.json file includes the sample request to add the phone verification API to the publisher. If required, you can amend details in Business Information. Amend the authorization bearer token with the invoked token in the curl command. We'll be using the ID in the response to delete the API. The API is now visible in the publisher. Similarly, using the same token and delete method, we can delete the phone verification API from the publisher by giving the ID received in the response while creating the phone verification API.
The API is now removed from the publisher. The store APIs contain multiple REST APIs that are used to perform the store's operations. These APIs are grouped as Subscription Individual API, API Individual API, Application Individual API, Tag Collection API, Tier Collection API, Subscription Collection API, Application Collection API, APIs API API, and Tier Individual API. Users need access tokens to invoke the APIs they've subscribed to under an application. Access tokens are passed in the HTTP header when invoking APIs. The API Manager provides a token API that you can use to generate and renew user and application access tokens. The response of the token API is a JSON message. You extract the token from the JSON and pass it with an HTTP authorization header to access the API. WSO2 API Manager supports the four most common authorization grant types. SAML extension grant type, Authorization Code Grant Type, NTLM Grant Type, and Password Grant Type. You can also define additional types as needed. After an access token is generated, sometimes you might have to renew the old token due to expiration or security concerns. You can renew an access token using a refresh token by issuing a REST call to the Token API. Let's take a look at the parameters in the command. The Token API URL is https localhost 8243 token, assuming that both the client and the gateway run on the same server. The payload is specified as follows. Replace the retoken value with the refresh token generated in the previous section. The header is specified as follows. Replace base64 encoded string as appropriate. For example, the following curl command can be used to access the token API. The REST message grants you a renewed access token along with the refresh token, which you can use the next time you renew the access token. A refresh token does not expire, but can be used only once. After issuing an access token, a user or an admin can revoke it in case of theft or a security violation. You can do this by calling the revoke API using a utility like curl. The Revoke API's endpoint URL is HTTP localhost 8280 revoke. You also specify the token to be revoked, the consumer key, and the consumer's secret key. The keys must be encoded using the base64 algorithm. Note that when the API gateway cache is enabled, it is enabled by default, even after revoking a token, it might still be available in the cache to consumers until the cache expires in approximately 15 minutes. User access tokens have a fixed expiration time, which is set to 60 minutes by default. Before deploying the API Manager to users, extend the default expiration time by editing the Access Token Default Validity Period element in Product Home Repository Conf Identity.xml. Also, take the timestamp SKU into account when configuring the expiration time. The timestamp SKU is used to manage small time gaps in the system clocks of different servers. For example, let's say you have two key managers and you generate a token from the first one and authenticate with the other. If the second server's clock runs 300 seconds ahead, you can configure a 300 second timestamp SKU in the first server. When the first key manager generates a token, for example with a default lifespan which is 3600 seconds, the timestamp SKU is deducted from the token's lifespan. The new lifespan is 3300 seconds and the first server calls the second server after 3200 seconds. You configure the timestamp SKU using the timestamp SKU element in Product Home Repository Conf Identity.xml. WSO2 products are managed internally using SOAP web services known as admin services. WSO2 products come with a management console UI, which communicates with these admin services to facilitate administration capabilities through the UI. Service in WSO2 products is defined by the following components. The service component, which provides the actual service, the UI component, which provides the web user interface for the service, and the service stub, which provides the interface to invoke the service generated from the service WSDL. There can be instances where you want to call backend web services directly. 
for example, in test automation, to minimize the overhead of having to change automation scripts whenever a UI change happens, developers prefer to call the underlying services in scripts. To do this, you need to discover and invoke these services from your applications. By default, the WSDLs of admin services are hidden from consumers. Following is how to discover them. Set the hide admin service WSDLs element to false in the product home repository conf carbon.xml file. Restart the server. Start the WSO2 product with the DOSGI console option, such as with the following command in Linux. When the server is started, press the Enter key several times to get the OSGI shell in the console. In the OSGI shell, type List Admin Services. The admin services of your product are listed. To see the service contract of an admin service, select the admin services URL and then paste it in your browser with question WSDL at the end. For example, note that in products like WSO2 ESB and WSO2 API Manager, the port is 8243, assuming the port offset is zero. However, you should be accessing the admin services via the management console port, which is 9443 when there is no port offset. The admin services URL appears as follows in the list you displayed when you used the list admin service command. Admin services are secured using HTTP basic authentication, a WS security username token, and session-based authentication to prevent anonymous invocations. To invoke an admin service, authenticate yourself and get the session cookie, then generate the client stubs to access the backend web services as described in the API Manager documentation. This concludes our lesson on published APIs. You can use the lab kit to try out the steps we've taken in this lesson. Thank you.